Hello and welcome to Your Hobby Connection. I'm Ben. Today we're going to be talking all about 2023, what we're going to be doing in 2024, and we're all going to be doing it while we play a game called Railroader, which just came out in mid-December. <laughs> Alrighty, so like we talked about at the beginning of the video, uh, we're going to talk about 2023 and what we've accomplished. So, as of the recording of this video, we have over 420 hours of watch time. And as anybody may know who's into the YouTube business, when you hit 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 hours of watch time publicly, you get to have monetization, which means commercials or ads on the channel, which I know a lot of you, myself included, aren't a fan of ads. But what that means is money or revenue from YouTube and from you guys by watching my stuff and supporting me in that manner means that I will get a few bucks every month or more depending on how much I get watched, how many hours, how much channel views, all that fun stuff means that the channel will be getting views. So, I wanted to thank you guys for getting me to 400 watch hours already, or over it I should say, which means that we're at the 10% mark. So, oh yeah, I'm excited for that. The uh, other great thing that we've accomplished this year is we've gotten over 12,000 views between all the videos on this channel so far. That is amazing. I, I was not expecting such an amazing success. I noticed that a lot of you guys have gravitated towards my, I will call them in real life videos of the Durango and Silverton and the Coombers and Toltec. Well, I haven't posted the Coombers and Toltec videos just yet, but I think the biggest video of 2023 so far was the the DNRGW or the Durango and Silverton narrow gauge locomotive number 493 getting shut down for the foreseeable future, possibly two years or so as they continue a vigorous maintenance plan for her. Which I congratulate and I uh, applaud the Durango and Silverton Railroad for one, not only bringing her back, but for keeping her up and maintaining her. Uh, so as, as I've talked to some of the guys out there on the Durango and Silverton, they love the locomotive. They can't wait for it to come back into service because man, they, they love that extra thousand pounds of tractive effort. It's a beautiful engine to run, they said. They love it. So that was one of the biggest videos. Uh, some of the videos that were unique and in their own niche was uh, my O-Scale track cleaning videos. Granted, I know a lot of you guys meh, were not that big of a fan of it because it, to be fair, was a very niche video. I mean, how many people are buying used railroad tracks that need some help and some TLC? Not many, obviously. So that was one of the video sets that was not as popular as I was expecting. But in this game, it's all a matter of finding out what you guys like and what I can do. So, what does 2024 have in store for us? Well, with any luck, I will be able to have enough money and time off to go and check out the DNRG number 169 and Rod. Gonna go get an update on how that thing's doing and how everybody's enjoying the railroad up there. Hopefully, there's some progress being made. I know that from the rumors that I've heard, there is some progress. What that progress is, it's TBD and it's on the the down low. I can't say too much about it, but it is having some things in progress. So with any luck, we will hear more about that as the year progresses. And I'm hopeful that I'll be the channel that gets to break that news and share that information with you guys. So that's one thing. Uh, I would love to go back to the DNRG 169 and completely reshoot the video of the locomotive and of the B1 car. I know I've gotten some criticisms on how the video was shot and how it looked and all the turning and twisting of the camera. Well, to be fair, when I made that video three years ago almost at this point, I was very unknowledgeable. I didn't have lapel microphones. I didn't have anything that was very 
technical at the time to give me a higher quality image and a higher quality audio sound. So that's one thing I look forward to changing in 2024. I'd also like to go and get some special events on the, the Durango and Solar 10 and the Cumbres and Toltec. But there again, it all comes down to money. A lot of the traveling that I do, I've done on my own dime. Uh, it's a one-day drive from my place to Durango or Chama, and it's a one-day back home. So, I mean, I'm looking at, if I want to do all these things, it's going to take me a week. So, I'd have to leave on a, on a Friday night or a Saturday morning, and I wouldn't be back home until the following Sunday. So, it's, it's a whole week off for me to do all this stuff. So, I kind of need to plan it all out, and hotels are, man, when you get to Durango, they are ridiculous. And Farmington, New Mexico, and Pagosa Springs are not much better, unfortunately. So, like I said, that's 2024's plan for that area, for the Colorado Narrow Gauge Railroads. Um, I'd also like to go visit the, um, the Colorado Railroad Museum in Golden, Colorado. That's another thing. Maybe if I get lucky, I get to see Heiss, and if he's up for it and he's willing, maybe get a little interview out of him. Don't know. It's a possibility. Uh, so there's the Colorado Golden Railroad Museum that I'd like to look, do this year as well. There's the uh, uh, the Georgetown Loop Railroad, which would be another cool one that I would like to try to do. That uh, might be part of the narrow gauge circuit that I attempt next year, or 2024 wise. Uh, as far as locally, I know that I am working with the Southern Pacific 794 group uh, to try to get an interview and a progress report on how that locomotive is doing. I know that I've heard that they've got a lot of great things planned for 2024 in terms of locomotives and rail car acquisitions and even expanding the San Antonio Heritage Railway Museum or Railroad Museum. So there are some pretty cool things going on in that area in San Antonio, which I look forward to covering as well. So those are just two aspects. The other one that I'd like to cover for 2024 is more of my railroad. I have been on a bit of a um, buying spree, <laughs> as it were, with my uh, my railroad stuff. Um, so I'm looking forward to uh, introducing that. I do have a couple of uh, switch videos, uh, some of the new switches that I've acquired, you know, going through a quick review of what they have, what they look like, and all of that informative and wonderful stuff as well as a switch cleaning video on how to, you know, clean up the uh, the, the rails and try to clean up some of the, uh, the roadbed that got painted on. So I have a couple of those videos coming out. Um, I do have some additional videos that are filmed earlier in 20, or I say earlier, I should say in late 2023, like late November, early December time frame I've recorded. And I'm going to start putting those out in uh, January and February as well. Uh, today was supposed to be the day I was going to release the final part of the Durango and Silverton switching the double header out with the uh, uh, Silverton Y. But I decided to hold off on that just for now and we'll put it up uh, in January for y'all's wonderful viewing pleasure. Uh, I noticed that you guys have been enjoying that quite a bit. This next video coming up for that is going to be on the longer side. I'm, I'm trying my best to bring it down to a very enjoyable time frame, but come to find out, it's a very labor-intensive process to do what we see them do, which is to turn the train around on the Y. And because it's such a long train, they have to do some locomotive jockeying. So we get to see all that, and... It's about a 25 minute video as it stands. So I'm not sure if I'm gonna try to break that up into uh, two parts or the one big one and some narration in between. So it's one of those things. It's kind of a work in progress for 2024. Uh, I'm working on doing some new things, uh, logo wise, uh, introduction video wise, which I'm hopeful that I can get out by mid to late 2024. It really just depends on um, a lot of different factors. Probably the biggest one of which will be, uh, well, time and who I'm hiring to get this stuff done. Because, ironically enough, people want to get paid. <laughs> and uh, I kind of need to figure out my brand for the channel. And I love y'all's suggestions. I love y'all's thoughts and input. So, you know, I greatly appreciate it. Um, 
I do plan on doing an actual video review on a uh, railroader here at some point. I have had several awesome uh, different games. Uh, one's been Railroad Online, and this one's been Railroader, that are railroad based and themed. Uh, I know that a lot of people may not be into the uh, the railroad simulation games and stuff like that. So it would just be a general overview and a, a grand plan or a grand observation on the part of the game i will say that i have enjoyed a lot of time spent on a railroader game here so it's just one of those things uh, that's part of the other stuff i plan on covering on the channel uh at some point this year as well i would love to uh, do what's called an outside railroad uh not leave it out there permanently because that's just not in the cards right now but I'm working on getting a space where I can set it up for like a couple of days, three or four days, and just lay it down on some wood or lay it down out in the yard and then cover it up with tarps and blankets and things like that. Just to try to keep the morning dew off it in the near future. And do a couple of videos of the trains running around outside. And uh, I've seen some amazing uh, layout plans that I can possibly create. Um, but I need to figure out how much track I have, how much... Um, uh, switches I need and then try to build it I mean like I said I have the opportunity for a really big yard that I could use so that's kind of one of the things I'm looking forward to doing this year is uh, setting that kind of stuff up um, hopefully that'll be something that you guys will enjoy and it'll be a cool experience with me setting it up and running the trains around out there but so that's kind of a general idea of my plans 2024 now a little bit more about background about who I am. Well, as you guys know, I'm Ben. I did work for the Durango and Soto Narrow Gauge Railroad in 2014. In 2015, I worked for the Main Line and a big Class 1 railroad. Uh, for those of you guys who know me personally, you know which railroad that was. I worked maintenance of way there for, oh my goodness, like seven years, something like that. I got tired of the maintenance of way life, being gone five, six days a week, home on the on literally show up Friday night, Saturday morning, and then drive back out Sunday morning, Sunday afternoon. That was a really hard thing to never be home and always on the move. So I kind of got away from that. I went home, uh, got a different job, uh, working for a, a family business. So that's been fun. It's been cool. It lets me have more flexibility with my schedule. But working for a smaller company and organization has had some drawbacks, financially speaking, because I cut my salary and about half maybe two-thirds so it's not not like I have a lot of uh, extra play room with finances currently which is where some of the stuff for 2024 is gonna get on the can I do this is it is it something that I can do viably without hurting myself too much financially so like I said in the future when the channel takes off and we get those views and we get the uh, advertisement dollars if you don't mind, you know, just sitting through them for a little bit, you know, kind of give me some interactions. I'd greatly appreciate it. I don't, I don't want or require or demand or ask for money. It's just one of those things that it does help make the world turn and it does help this channel grow. And I mean, this past year I spent, oh, probably almost $2,000 between recording equipment, lighting equipment, uh, besides trains and other fun things. So, you know, just... Believe it or not, it's expensive for this hobby as well. You all should probably know that. If you have any trained hobbies of your own, you've seen how much things are. And while we love them to death, sometimes our wallets just don't love us back. So, uh, that being said, I, I got into the railroading stuff and model trains when I was a little kid. As a matter of fact, somewhere I have a photo of myself when I was like a year and a half, two years old, being held in my dad's hands as uh, I'm seeing a steam locomotive. Well, I'm not seeing it. My dad's holding me and he's next to the locomotive drivers. And it was the Challenger that showed up in our town in 1992, 1991, somewhere in that time frame it came in. So, I mean, it was, it's quite an amazing experience. It really is. Um, I have enjoyed it thoroughly, so... Uh, railroading and trains in general have been quite the amazing thing to experience. My, my first railroad uh, narrow gauge experience was uh, 20, 
2008, 2012, somewhere in that time frame, I went and I rode the uh, the Durango and Soto Narrow Gauge Railroad uh, with uh, a troop of Boy Scouts doing um, uh, a hiking event, which, man, that is my first experience with Narrow Gauge, and ironically enough, that's where I got my first real railroading job was on the Narrow Gauge. So, go figure. Round robin, all that fun stuff. Uh, so, yeah, love that. Um, always love trains. My first train set was a Lionel, Lionel Safari set. I know I said Lionel twice, but it was called the Lionel Safari. And it was uh, just a simple, basic, I don't remember if it's an oval. I think it was just a s circle track. And it was the old school... No backwards, just forwards. Uh, one gondola, a uh, flat car, I believe, and a caboose. I mean, it was super basic, super simple. It came with a a CD-ROM or a CD disc, and it had it where you could get into this thing, you could print stuff out, and you could build your own safari adventure. It was it was quite an interesting little thing. So, I mean, it was a pretty cool experience back there, and so, like I said, I've grown up with the uh, trains. My next set was the uh, Pennsylvania Flyer set, which I've actually talked about in this uh, uh, last video that I produced. So, I've had a great time. Uh, if you have any questions or thoughts or want to know more about me or anything about this channel, be more than happy to answer it. Just drop me a comment or uh, email me, uh, yourhobbyconnection at gmail.com. Uh, if you want to do uh, interviews, if you want to be part of the channel and just just chat or anything like that, just let me know. Give me a hit, uh, hit me up. Be able to talk and have fun. So, thank you guys, and I hope you guys enjoy this video.